Hello! Welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we have got a, I guess I'm answering the age old question. Am I getting bored of Princess Connect? God no, absolutely not. Guys, chill, chill, chill. I am not getting bored of Princess Connect, but that is not the entire video. I'm, otherwise, like, you know, this video would be finished in like 30 seconds. I need to say that up front because you guys already know I hate clickbait and I am going to answer that question. It's probably going to be the title of the video. Am I getting bored? No, I am not. However, I guess on the channel, this is a little bit meta. It does look like I'm branching out it does look like i'm making less pre-con videos but that is not a result of pre-con being bad that is a result of a lot of good games being like put onto the market and i guess it's for the better especially because pre-con it's fundamentally a side game probably like one of the most pleasant casual games that i've ever played and it's just that recently especially because of all these awesome games coming out i just feel like i'm taking up the casual aspect more i am really enjoying like spending less time on pre-con and more time just doing other things such as making content for you guys me not uploading videos has nothing to do with you guys it has nothing to do with pre-con it's just me not having enough time if i could have it my way i would upload three times a day one pre-con and two other games something like that however i am not that fortunate but with that being said let's talk about what we're going to be talking about today and that is a kind of like a health check analysis like my kind of review over these last i think it's been like six seven months now that pre-con has released i was looking at summer kiaru and i was like dang we actually made it to summer kiaru and then i was just wondering like you know how is the game doing are we gonna live past a year if any of you are gacha vets you guys already know it's really tough for gacha games to actually make it past the one year mark. So I just wanted to take this video to actually go and have a look through my account, how I feel like I've progressed over these last six and seven months, and then kind of also have a look at like, you know, how I think the game is going itself. With that being said, let's jump right into it. And I just kind of want to go through my characters, kind of go through the stories, what has happened for these last six to seven months. And the reason is because I want to explain my scenario and like where I've come from there. What I mean by scenario is that I am a low spender. I only buy like monthly packs. Even right now, I'm actually not on the monthly pack but I may get back onto it in like a few days if I feel like it but what I really wanted to showcase it was like all of this so look at all of these five star characters like wow honestly after like six or seven months like I really believe that the gap power between like whales and like low spenders and everybody it just becomes really really small eventually I'm probably going to be able to five star even six star like most of these units that is probably the thing that I like the most about this game it's just that like it's not that like everyone has an equal like footing but it's that I'm a collector and at the end of the day I can actually get like every single unit technically from like a collection or like a gameplay point of view I really like that because like it means that I can almost enjoy the game as much as somebody who's spending a lot of money as for the stories themselves you guys already know like they are just so rich so much production value I really like it however let's talk more about the quest or like the arena and the end game loot so it's gone now but like the event quests I like but it's really um the same thing over and over I kind of wished that it wasn't but like then that would kind of take away from it being like a casual game again i'm gonna reiterate i do think that this game is best enjoyed casually i know i've been like you know trying to gun for top 10 in cb for like the last like seven months but to be honest like i really like where we're going especially you know we're getting like more and more shards to farm for like new characters that were released like maybe like four months ago i know predominantly the gameplay is the same but again this was designed to be a casual game however when we come to arena and princess arena oh man this stuff's so sweaty like seriously for real like this whole bracket system is so tough like like arena is something that i really enjoy but i don't really enjoy the implementation of it i really like that you know we're examining kind of like their team comps and then building counters for them but what i don't like is that first of all we're limited to five attacks a day second of all for some reason there is a five minute like kind of delay before we can attack another person it kind of makes like a hit and run really hard but like they're probably doing that to combat people like me <laughs> and the last thing is is i guess like kind of the predictability i guess this goes further than just like arena so it's kind of like you know how i'm able to just go to like the cn servers or whatever and pick up like an Ilya guide or something and then i can translate it for you guys and then away we go i feel like for both arena and clan battle there's not really that level of creativity anymore and it's this creativity that kind of like i wish we had because i think it would add so much more to the game that being said i'm gonna stop whining about like arena and just get out of here princess arena is something that i don't really like especially because of all of these like three triple question mark you don't know what teams they're running it actually does add a lot of like tactical and strategy like elements to the arena scene on the other hand if this one was like a reno com they would feature like a yukari and a yuki it means that you can expect those two characters to not be supporting an ilya comp 
so you can kind of deduce the Ilya comp if there is one. Yeah, these tactical elements are like really cool and it really sets like, you know, the good players from the really great players. But honestly, I still don't like it and it's just because I'm really bad at it. <laughs> All right, I guess let's get to the star of the Princess Connect game and I think that is clan battle because this is probably the most fun aspect of it. The thing I really want to talk about for clan battle is kind of that creativity process. Like I said before, like the creativity is lost, especially when like the CN counterparts have actually done it. They've built all of these optimized and incredible timelines and we can't do anything to do it better or something like that. They've actually even built simulators to do clan battle outside of clan battle. However, that may change from the next patch onwards. I think CN actually deviated from like the traditional JP like kind of stats. I think A, the boss stats got changed and so like obviously the team comps will change, right? But also B, it was about this time where CN got their exclusive unit Kana. Kana is a pretty broken character, uh, especially for her time. I would say that she's like comparable to a Prefez character. However, we will probably not get her seeing as she is a CN exclusive. And so what that means is that we may be able to have some like creativity over our boss fights from now on. And so I'm pretty excited for that. And that's really nice. Last thing I want to talk about are the other aspects of the game. So like the guild house and all of that. It is what it is, right? I really like the attention to detail they put into this. Like, for example, you saw that Tamaki just like freaking climb onto that like, horse. And that's not a horse. That's a griffin looking thing. And then we see these girls coming over here and they're about to one of them. Yeah, let's get into that Lima costume. Let's go, Yuki. Okay, I know Yuki's a guy. Give me a break, guys. And then away he goes. Like, this is all really, really nice attention to detail, right? Like, this is not what you're going to find in a typical game. And with that in mind, I guess my review of the game itself is over. And I want to talk more about the game health. How exactly do I feel this game is going? Will it survive? All that kind of stuff. All right, let's jump over to a screen that's more relevant. And that is this one over here, as well as this one over here. So there are a couple of things that I want to talk about. The first of which I want to mention some assumptions. You'll see that the country slash region for these two, they're both for the US. The only difference between the two is that one is representative of the iTunes app store and the other one is for the Google Play app store. So let's first have a look at the most important metrics in my opinion, which is downloads and revenue. So we've got 20K, we've got 70K. So in total, we have 90K downloads. 90K downloads in the month of April, I think is not that good. To be honest, when Princess Connect launched in global, I really thought it'd be doing probably, let's say like four times as well as it is doing right now. I just wish that there was a little bit more advertising going on. Like, I don't think I've ever seen like a single Princess Connect ad. That may be because I'm already playing the game, but like, I just wish I saw a little bit more into like marketing material, even more into like the collaborations. Like, I'm sure a lot of you came here from those Hololive collabs. I really liked that, even though I'm not like a really massive fan of Hololive. I really do think that that really helped. So again, 70K, 20K, like it is within expectation and it is kind of indicative of the game not dying. 90K downloads in April, like it's okay. It does say underneath here that there are ads going on, but I, yeah, like I said, I just haven't seen them. The other metric that we're looking at is revenue. So 400K last month and 200K last month, that's makes 600K in total last month. And again, guys, remember that this is for the US only. Though typically the US is probably the biggest spender in the global region. 600K revenue, again, it's not that great. However, I do think that there is an explanation to the revenue at least. I don't know about the downloads, but definitely for the revenue. It's just that like because of our foresight, because of all this, oh man, we got like freaking two star banners coming out. There has been no real truly like exceptionally enticing banner that has come out. Most of the time it's kind of like whatever, right? We had Misato banner, we had Tsumigi banner. I don't know what anyone expected. However, with all of this being said, I am not too worried for the game because I saw something like this. Uh, how about that? So we've got this one over here. However, I'm actually going to use the Android version because this one is shows the story a bit better in my opinion. What you see here are actually a couple of bumps, right? So this was for a banner, this was for another banner, and this was for the Ilya banner. And this last one over here is for the Tsumigi banner. What I want to talk about is this leap over here. And why I want to talk about this leap is because this is kind of one of the first banners that like a lot of content creators, a lot of people in the community are like, actually, you probably should roll for Ilya. Most of the characters before this, you know, like the Arisa, the Hatsune, the Nozomi or whatever, like you don't roll for them. Yoka, I don't think her graph is on here anymore, but like it also had a pretty good spike. What this is indicative of is I believe that like people are willing to spend when there is something that's worth spending for. And what do we have coming up? We have the summer banners. On top of the summer banners coming out, like we also have been saving for a long, long time. I know the majority of you are like, you know, fully saved up 45k to go into summer Kiaru. However, when that passes, I think spending might rise a little bit, especially since we're going to go through that like four 
couple month squeeze where like everything is kind of like, oh man, we kind of should roll for it. So from a game health perspective, I think it's okay. However, I think we do need to cross this summer period to really know where we're at. As for whether we're going to shut down within a year, I honestly really doubt it. I think we're going okay. I don't think we're doing exceptionally well. Like I said, I really expected this game to be like three, four times as successful than it is right now. However, I do think we'll make it to one year and I hope that we'll make it to four years. As you can tell, I really like this game, huh? The thing about Crunchyroll is that we had like pretty bad expectations for them as we were coming into the game. And the reason is because they actually did like crumble a couple of other games like right before this. I personally think that they've done a decent job. They have not messed with any of the systems. If anything, they brought over like sparking really, really early on. In terms of content production, I think at the start they had a little bit of an identity crisis, like going accelerated, then going unaccelerated. However, now I feel like they've settled on something and that something is we're going to be following like a JP pace. And that's fair enough. Every single time that they've come out with the content, it's kind of gone pretty flawlessly. Honestly, I can't even remember the last time that there was a maintenance. From all of this, this aspect of the game, I feel like they have done a decent job. However, what I do feel for Crunchyroll is that when they have mistakes, it gets a little bit bad. For example, I'm talking about the recent false bannings. I'm talking about the clan battle score mess up. Even in the last clan battle in the Discord, what people are reporting are that they are actually missing like some damage, a lot of damage from the last 10 minutes before the cutoff. So what this means is that if you attacked 10 minutes before the cutoff, that damage is probably not counted. It's stuff like this that I don't know if I can blame Crunchyroll for it. I don't think they're even developing the game. I think they're only handling the translations and the localizations and pumping out like those posts on the social media. But it's stuff like this that they're not doing too well. I really hope that they can improve on. To be honest, it's actually like my only criticism of Crunchyroll. The other big thing, and I guess it's related to this piece of criticism, and it's that they really don't know how to compensate people. Like I said before, there have been a lot of like false bannings, and I'm not even talking like big high profile up like top players or anything there are people who have been falsely banned and they were only like freaking like in mid game they weren't even like doing like the big damage or in like some high tier clan the algorithm just went crazy people were banned for two weeks and then suddenly a few days ago everyone just started getting unbanned however what has happened is that they've missed like two weeks or three weeks worth of progress and they have just not been compensated for it same goes for the, like the clan battle 2 or was it clan battle 3 results it was just like absolutely crazy there were a whole bunch of clans that got screwed over and there was just absolutely no compensation for it i don't even know what to say about that. Again, looking at this stuff, like all of this content, they are really good at managing their socials at least, as well as delivering the content. And you know, like that's already really good. However, coming back to it, that is a piece of criticism that I really wish that they would address, but that's okay. And I think honestly, overall, the game is in good hands. They're doing okay. The game is alive. If you guys keep it alive for four years without going like full pay to win and just following along the JP timeline, then I am like, I'm super gravy. I'm super happy. But yeah, I think that's kind of it for me for this one. I think I've rambled on way too long this time. All right, let's get into a secret question. I want to pose this question to you, honestly. Are you guys getting bored of the game? How are you guys feeling about the future of it? I've given you my thoughts and honestly, it would be really interesting to read your thoughts too. You guys already know, I'm always interested in what the community has to say, so drop it down in the comments. Furthermore, if you've reached this part of the video, aka dropping down the secret answer to the secret question, I appreciate that you have made it to the end. Thank you guys so much for getting here. And to be honest, like I really just want to give you guys a massive thank you. I know that this has been a really, really meta video and probably most of you are not going to make it here. But seriously, without you guys, without this game, like I would be nobody. You guys have made me and this is honestly incredible. I know that I'm still a relatively small YouTuber, but like, you know, maybe with time we can grow into something a bit bigger. I hope you guys are still enjoying the game as well as the content because I am still enjoying making the content for you guys. But alas, I have rambled again, so I'm very sorry for that. <laughs> so let's keep going with the ending sequence again. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have found this video kind of helpful or entertaining or kind of informative this time, I know it's a bit different, then consider to dropping a like, a sub, or a comment, or a follow, or a pin, or whatever else there is. However, for the last time in this video, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.